All right, guys, welcome to another episode of The Suited Shootist. <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing this time is just kind of a brief intro into the shot timer that Target Barn was good enough to send me, and then also just go over some basic stuff that it's useful for other than kind of the obvious that we've all seen online so that we're not staring at a st static table. I'm just going to jump right into it. So what we've got here is a Pocket Pro 2 and it runs just on a single 9 volt battery that is not included. So just like with most electronics, you're going to have to supply the batteries and this one runs on 9 volt <clears throat> as opposed to a more traditional, say, AA. When you turn it on, you hit that button and it's going to bring up a main screen. And on that main screen, you can set it up to show kind of whatever information you want. It will show the total time. It'll show the time from your first shot, all of that. With the menu buttons, you're able to scroll through and it will show first shot, second shot, third shot, etc as well as your split times, which is the times between shots. Here is where you can set your par time. So this is going to be the time in between beeps. So if it is set to zero, then it's just going to give you the initial beep. You can dial that up to whatever. Uh, I think it'll run as long as 99 seconds. Basically, it's going to run longer than you're ever going to realistically need it. Um, I'm setting it here at one second. You'll see why later. For the start time, you can set it either as random, instant. Uh, I prefer random because depending on how close you are to whoever is triggering the timer, first off, if you're doing it on, your, uh, on yourself, random is really the only way to go. If you're using it with somebody else, the button clicks can be positive enough that uh, somebody can hear the button before the beep goes off and kind of game it a little bit. You can set both the minimum and maximum start times for the initial beep. It gives you a little battery readout here. Uh, it gives you how much time the backlight is on for the purposes of the video. Uh, I've turned it off because it can kind of wash out the lens. And so obviously it would be hard looking at this bright blue glowing screen. You can control the beeper volume as well. And then this gives you the ability to control what you see on that initial screen, whether it's rounds per minute, uh, single time only, or the review direct. I haven't played with this too much because I haven't actually shot live fire with it yet, but this allows you to control the sensitivity of the mic. Um, for my purposes here, I'm going to dial it down just because since I'm not using live rounds, I'm wondering if it might pick up on the click of the uh, dry fire mag that I'm using. We'll see. I'm sorry, that was echo, and then you've got shot sensitivity. Um, so let's dial that up. And then let's go back and set that back to the default of 11. And then when you get it, you set the day, month, and year. I don't know how much memory this thing has. I don't think it really matters any for that, but it's just nice to have. So that's kind of the overview of the functionality. It's super user friendly. I was able to figure out all of this without going through the, the, the user manual, like your average red blooded American man. Uh, the only thing that I don't remember off the top of my head is how to turn it off, but it also has an auto shut off. So that's not super important. So now I'm going to pull back and kind of show you some of the stuff that you can do at home with a shot timer. Okay, so everybody's seen on Instagram people doing the shooter ready drills either at home or at the range using the timer for its full functionality. And so 
I'm not going to go into that because there's already a ton of information out there. Some of the stuff that has been featured in training classes that I've been to, specifically the one with Gabe White, this is stuff that I've never seen before. Not saying that there are other people out there teaching it, but it was my first introduction to it. Now, you notice that when I first set this up, I have the part-time at one second. And so for the purposes of that, all it's there to do is practice the idea of getting your hand to the gun as fast as you possibly can. Now, that first one was super sloppy, so I'm going to try it again and see. Okay, even just with a couple of them, I'm able to get it pretty easily in that one second par. So I'm going to go ahead and dial it down to half a second and see what we're looking at there. Because the idea is that if you break this stuff down into these little micro drills, and see, I just dorked up the draw, so that's something I'd have to work with. This is the level that you'd have to break it down to in order to actually start cutting your times down on things like the fast drill. So it's just, and it's one of those things is making sure that you're getting the positive, consistent draw every time. Clearly, that's something that I need to work on. Another one that I thought was really handy, I'm going to come a little bit closer here. This is a uh, dry fire mag in my training Glock. Because of how this works, I'm not going to clear it on camera, but it has been cleared repeatedly. The nice thing is that it resets the trigger without you having to actually run the slide. Another exercise that Gabe teaches is actually having you present it out to the target in register. And then when the timer goes off, trying to get a shot off as quickly as possible. And so what you're doing is you're training your trigger finger to move quickly. And it's the only thing that you're focused on is trying to do that without disrupting your sights. It's a lot harder than you'd think, so I definitely recommend checking that one out as well because it's something that you can kind of play with. And every aspect of your drawn presentation from just getting the hand on the gun to getting it out to getting that first shot off, every step of it is something that you can break down and work standalone. Because, yeah, it's a lot more fun to take that part-time and just work on getting that first shot off as quickly as you can. But if you're not able to get to where you wanna be, trying to work all of it at once is not necessarily gonna get you where you wanna be. So, this is at a second and a half. Right now, I'm getting that shot breaking right about that second beep with no recoil. So, once I start putting rounds in the gun and it starts fighting me, it might be a little bit different. So, it's just something to keep in mind. There's a lot that you can do with a shot timer other than just timing shots and other than just reminding yourself how badly you suck. So get one, get creative with it. Um, if you saw my little kind of gag video uh, unboxing last week, I'll, I'll link to it as well so that way you can kind of get a kick out of it. But yeah, there's any aspect of this that you're looking to measure, this is a great tool for. So I absolutely recommend picking one up. Uh, for the longest time, I was one of those there's no timer in a gunfight kind of people. And um, while there's certainly no shooter ready, in a real life circumstance, the reason that this thing is coming out is because there is somebody trying to hurt you. And the less time you give them to do that, the better. So 
Hope you guys found this useful. Uh, just a little bit of food for thought. And it is definitely a great time to do it since we're all stuck inside and can't go nowhere. So hope everybody has a great week and I will see you next time.